I've been alerted that physicists have discovered a new unified theory. It supposedly combines gravity with electromagnetism and reveals that the electric and magnetic forces are really geometric in nature, just like gravity. According to one of the authors, it's an aesthetically appealing geometric formulation of electromagnetism. Sounds amazing, so let's have a look at the paper. Electromagnetism has been combined with gravity in the geometric theory before. This is the work of Calusa and Klein. But to make this work, one needs a fourth dimension of space rolled up to a small circle. A particle is charged if it moves into that fourth dimension. Calusa-Klein theory works well for the electric and magnetic fields created by a charge. But it doesn't give you the charged particles themselves. This, I think, was the major reason why the Calusa-Klein theory was abandoned as an approach to a theory of everything. The authors of the new paper want to change this. Of course, you can't just take normal general relativity and expect to find electric fields in it. You need to do something new. They take a variation of general relativity called while gravity. It just so happens that I once wrote a paper about this, but that's a different story. I'm just mentioning this to convince you that I may not know what I'm talking about, but I once knew it. In while gravity, one introduces an additional vector field. Just by counting the degrees of freedom, I can tell you that this will not allow you to introduce both the electromagnetic field and charged particles. So I have no idea how this is supposed to work but let's be open-minded. They start with adding the electromagnetic potential to the metric. That's what describes the properties of space and time in three plus one dimensions. This means that all particles will be affected by the electromagnetic fields, even the uncharged ones, which Makes no sense to me, but let's be open-minded. Then they derive something that they call the generalized Maxwell's equation. Maxwell's equation is linear in the electromagnetic potential. This is this A here. Their equation is quadratic in A, so it isn't a generalized equation, it's just a different equation. By this I mean it doesn't even have a limit in which it'll give you the standard equation, at least I can't see how but let's be open-minded. This all looks fine. Ooh, what's this? There's something weird with the indices here. You see, these indices, they run over all dimensions of space and time. If you have the same index as a subscript and a superscript, it means you sum over it, so it becomes a dummy index. You should never use the same dummy index for two different sums, then you no longer know what to sum over. So this is bad maths notation, but I've seen worse things in typesetting, so let's move on. They then identify the charge density as the product between the electromagnetic potential and the fall velocity. That makes no sense to me because it would mean that if you have, say, an electron in an electromagnetic field and you increase the strength of the field, then the charge of the electron increases, which, well, it doesn't. It also is not gauge invariant, by which I mean that usually the absolute value of the potential shouldn't be physically relevant, but it is here. Also, this definition means that the current, which they define down here, is quadratic in the velocity, which again, well, it just isn't. To be honest, I'm getting a little confused at this point. Oops, what's this? Here is something odd happening with these indices again. You can't just set a non-contracted index equal to a contract one. Just so happens that the result is correct, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, oh, they do it again and again. This is bad. This is just mathematically wrong. It seems that these guys don't know how tensor indices work, but let's see how they get the Maxwell equation. They divide by a vector they've summed over. I know it can be hard to decipher this notation, but let me give you a simple example of what they've done. Suppose you have the equation 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4 minus 5 times 5 equals 0. Now you can write this as a square of a vector where the vector has entries 3, 4, 0, i times 5. Let's call this vector v mu. You can then write this equation as v nu v nu equals 0 using the sum convention that if you have an index up and down, you sum over it. So this is a nonlinear equation. 
what do they do to get a linear equation from it? They divide by the vector because it's a square, you see, and essentially get v is equal to the zero vector by which you have thrown away almost all possible solutions. What else? They then derive that electric charges all move with the speed of light, which, well, they don't. So they save me the effort of having to prove them wrong by doing it themselves. I don't want to be too harsh on the authors. Screwing up the notation of dummy indices and dividing by vectors are mistakes that almost every student makes at some point. I certainly did. But normally this sort of thing doesn't get published. If you're a student, these are mistakes you can avoid by checking your equations with some math software. In summary, this paper is full of basic maths mistakes and makes no physical sense whatsoever. It should never have gotten published and it should be retracted. I'm sorry, but no, we aren't any closer to a unified theory. Have you seen my cool pen that magnetically floats? It comes from a company called Novium and they now have a Kickstarter campaign for a new pen. The new hover pen Verse has a particularly light, small and portable design. It's indeed the first portable hover pen ever. How does it hover? The magnet's in the cap, so you can carry it with you. They've called it the Apollo Edition as a tribute to the 1969 Apollo mission. Like all the Novium hover pens, it's refillable, but this one doesn't bring the weight and size of the big base, so it doesn't drag down your pockets. This is a really neat design, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. I love the Novium pens, because they not only look good and are the perfect fidget spinner, they're also a amazing to write with. Honestly, the best pens I've ever had. They also make really good gifts, so maybe something to keep in mind with Father's Day coming up. If that sounds like something for you or someone you know, have a look at their Kickstarter campaign because early supporters can get up to 30% off. If you're more interested in their classical desk designs with the solid stand, you can get a 10% discount by using my code Zabina, scanning the QR code or clicking on the link in the info below. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.